This is your other brother's podcast. Sorta. What's up, homies? And welcome to uh, the season finale of the Corona Convo Cast. Ryan, I don't know if you were aware of this. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. No <laughs> pressure, that Ryan. Bomb. This is the last one for the foreseeable future. My name is Tom. I am the host of this beloved program, and I am the co-founder editor of Your Other Brothers. We're a community navigating faith, homosexuality, masculinity, and today we solve at long last the coronavirus together it's up it's up to me to wrap up a whole season's worth of plot there's a lines lot there's a lot of, there's like um yeah there's across 10 different podcast guests you have a lot to wrap up here tonight so i hope you i hope you're up for it but um but yeah as you can hear y'all our guest today is the one the only the one from the city of oaks it's our other brother ryan what's up ryan hey everyone hey tom <laughs> Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us here today, Ryan. Um, this has been fun because this is we've done. It's hard to believe. Like, I don't know how everyone feels about the length of time this has been. It's probably, I mean, whenever you ask someone about time, you, people either say time flies or it's the slowest thing in the world. It's always like both, right? It's always like time mm-hmm. takes forever or it's gone in a flash. And so I don't know how people at this juncture in time, if you're listening to this in the present day, how you feel about the coronavirus pandemic and the quarantines and the shutdowns and everything. But this is week six. We're finishing week six of the convo cast, which is crazy to me that I've been having these what? three to four time a week conversations with people for that long. But um, and, the, and the pandemic went a few weeks before that here in America anyway. So um, it's been a fun distraction. It's been a fun new endeavor for, for your other brothers. And you know, I've mentioned it here and there, but the combo cast isn't going away. The combo cast will, will stick, will remain. It just won't be the Corona combo cast anymore. It'll just be the year of the brothers combo cast. And I, I have no, op, no idea how often they'll pop up, but, um, but I always, I've like thoroughly enjoyed these 20, 30 minute conversations with some of my favorite people in the world. So, um, so today we we, we wrap up this six week adventure. Um, I only intended to do it actually for like four weeks when we first set out, but, but, it was fun and it was great. And, uh, eventually we're going to, we're going to pivot back to what we do best. I think here at your other brothers, which is our, our bi-monthly podcast. And so, um, that'll be coming down the pike at some point. We're still like, I've, I've mentioned Amazon and like shipping in general, I think is just experiencing abnormal delays for certain products and things. And so I mentioned somewhere about midway through this convo cast adventure, my microphone, my beloved microphone of four years. It served the Yobcast and so many Zoom calls and other audio productions so well. Videos, tons of videos that we've put out. Um, it just gave up the ghost during this during this pandemic. It was coronavirus struck. <laughs> it took even my beloved microphone from me. So the COVID um, stress, it couldn't couldn't handle it. <laughs> so I am it's I'm waiting in limbo for um, the Yob microphone 2.0. I literally have no idea when it's going to get here, but obviously I refuse to record. This is what I've been telling Ryan and Jacob and some of the other guys who appear on the podcast. Like I just refuse to record a 60 to 90 minute podcast using the current microphone that I'm using. I, I just, I will not settle for a lower standard. So, um, so we'll see. We'll TBD. <laughs> we'll see what happens. You know how the grocery stores are all out of like flour and yeast right now because everyone's decided to do yes. takeout baking. I bet you Amazon's just out of podcast microphones. <laughs> really though, because it took me a while. I had to like go down some dark alleys to find like a legitimate <laughs> microphone. Like I'm not going to just spend two hundred dollars on a microphone that I that I'm not a fan of. So it took a while even just to find one that was available. Mm-hmm. Um, and so again, fingers crossed, it'll get here within the next couple weeks. But um, but in the meantime, Ryan, I feel like I've mm-hmm. set it up. That's all the information I have. That's, that's the forward of everything. Thank you to everyone who's reached out. Like we've had some really encouraging comments and emails over the last month and a half about people who are enjoying these little regular quick episodes. Um, and again, sometimes with Dean, for instance, we talk about parks and rec the whole time. And then other times, um, just this week here with Nate, like we talked, about uh control and like issues of loss of control during this pandemic for like 20 minutes and and it's been great to have like all kinds of conversations in this in this time ryan in a way this is our third time meeting because as we mentioned on your 
first, technically second podcast, um, we had some technical snafus on your first mm-hmm. one. So, so <laughs> it feels back. like the third one. Yeah. It feels like the third one. It feels like mm-hmm. you're an honorary club in the three peak club with Nate and a couple others. So mm-hmm. I'm going to throw it. you mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to claim that <laughs> name, it, okay. name it and claim it, <laughs> name it, claim it. Exactly. I wanted to right off the top, Ryan, because right before we started recording, you showed me something in your hair. So we just need to get that yeah. out of the way. You have something in your hair. Like a lot of people, my hair is getting pretty, pretty long. Um, and so I got these like Velcro hair gripper strips off of Amazon that like hold my hair Wait, in place. You got Velcro and- hair gripper strips from Amazon and I can't get my microphone from Amazon. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. Well, you can't record a podcast with these bad boys. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but they like keep my hair in place and keep keep it under control, which is great. I'm still, con- you need to explain more. So explain to the viewer, well, the listener, cause they can't yeah. view. Like, what are we, what do you got in your hair right now? It's like an oval. It's about um, like four inches long, maybe even six inches long and a few inches wide. And on one side it has like the Velcro hooks uh, on it and so uh-huh. it'll like if you just press it down onto your hair to like it's stay there spiky. and hold the hair in place yeah yeah and then so i have two of them in right now one toward the front one toward the back and just as as my hair gets longer if i want to keep growing it out which i might then i do want to sort of like train it to get, be going in the direction i want oh i see i see um, and so that's going to help with that and also the feeling of my hair being going weird directions is distracting uh-huh. Um, cause like I can feel it in my scalp and it like brushes against my ears and stuff. So having it, um, having it kind of under control helps me focus on things other than my hair. That's very fascinating. It's fascinating that this has been the week of hair because yeah. in our last episode, Jacob was talking about, he made the decision to just buzz his hair because his family has male pattern baldness. It's like an unfortunate thing that he's inherited along with his brother Nate and so for the first time in his life he buzzed his head and that's like the new he did it himself like so it's like quarantine people are buzzing their heads or letting your hair grow out and so so on the flip side of it we go to you who's got (laughs) little hair nets in your hair holding things in place it's like um what is it? It's like a pole. It's like you're trying to direct the tomato plant right? It's like you're trying to direct the ivy to go this way and not not stray exactly I get it can I say, Tom? Yes. Uh, your skin looks very clear right now. Very good. Like I don't know if it's thank you. It's like all, your lighting. It's all the lighting. Like, all the lighting. <laughs> it's a combination. Okay, so it's a combination of this is actually one of the best times of the day because during the middle of the day, um, I have to like literally cover my window. I have a window right in front of mm-hmm. my desk, and I literally have to cover my window between the hours of like eight a.m. and three p.m because the sun is so bright coming through the window that, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it, it's all an aesthetic. So if I'm on a webcam with somebody like whatever, I'm still visible, but my skin is like a ghost. Like it's so translucent. It's so like white and reflected. Uh Um, I have to put a blanket or something over the window so that I have like a normal sense of lighting. But right now, you know, especially it's a cloudy day today. Um, Mm -hmm. at this time of the day, the sun is not directly in front of my window and so mm-hmm. it's really good lighting. I do have lighting um, yeah. in my studio, which helps as well. Plus, I um, am semi clean shaven. I'm not like totally mm-hmm. clean shaven, but I think mm-hmm. that adds to the overall complexion it's, um, that I'm going for right now. So nice. So there's that. But Ryan, I need to I need to catch you up because I was looking out the window. It just reminded me of the things I was rushing to do before I signed on today to talk to mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully, this is a relatable topic because. Um, I've, I've, I've caught wind that a lot of people during this pandemic are purchasing plants. Like they need, Mm -hmm. they need a sense of purpose right now. We all need a sense of purpose and we need something to do. We need need to keep things alive, right? We need to take care Mm -hmm. of something. And for whatever reason, I have felt that impulse in me, you know, I'm not, I'm not about to adopt a kitten or a puppy or a Mm -hmm. parakeet or anything, but, but sure, I'll, I'll get a couple plants and, and contribute to the, to the, plant population keeping it going whatever so like i literally today came back from lowe's and purchased let me see one two i think it was three different plants including one right here that i can show you i've always wanted one of these and it's i have no idea why it took me this long to get one but it is an aloe plant Uh currently inhabiting the dwelling pot 
of my formerly alive, now deceased and garbage ridden cactus. Somehow okay. I killed this cactus and it was really depressing and sad, but I'm doubling down on getting more plants, even though I killed the easiest one to keep alive. You've, so I have an aloe plant. Joined the, uh, you've joined the Kill the, Kill the Succulent Club. I, I'm a proud <laughs> member of that club. Have you done that too? Okay, good. Yeah, I allowed a, uh, what was it? I don't know, some sort of succulent to die. I, yeah, I guess they said, I guess I like, underwatered I, it. Yeah, yeah. You underwatered it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I overwatered I definitely overwatered it. Um, Cause I, I just, you know. I just never watered it. <laughs> See, okay, so we took different yeah. approaches. I was like, maybe every two weeks, two and a half weeks, I water, and apparently that was too much because, uh-huh. because yeah, it just like shriveled up and died, and then white things started growing on it this week, and so I was like, yeah. I think it's probably yeah. not gonna. I kept holding out hope, like it'll come back. It'll come. Back. Plants come back to life, right? Is that isn't that mm-hmm. true? But um, I don't have the. I can't show you the other plants because I have two others in other parts of the room. But I do have this guy. I'll point the camera down. Um. I've had this little mm. guy for a few months now, and I don't know what it is, but it's got big, like, diamond-shaped um, red leaves with green fringes on all of them, and there's a couple stalks of flowers, if you look real close. Oh, and it was yeah. over... A friend gave it to me, and I've been keeping this thing alive. Somehow, by some miracle, I can't keep a cactus alive, but I can keep this thriving plant alive. It started out as one stalk, and now there's, like, four or five stalks growing. And it wasn't a smaller pot, and so today I purchased this bigger pot it felt like it needed to to renovate re to like move on up to to greater things but um i ran out of potting soil so it's currently like halfway <laughs> down in the pot it's like leaning against the pot it doesn't have like any foundation and so i'm hoping it'll be okay until tomorrow i'm gonna get some yeah. potting, fill the pot tomorrow but um i'm hopeful ryan that however long this pandemic lasts and ideally beyond this quarantine and shutdown that i can keep these living things alive in my midst. That's, that's the hope. Yeah. That, that is one thing that I'd like to be the kind of person who kept a lot of plants, but I just have never really been that kind of person. Mm. Yeah. I'm a little overwhelmed. This is definitely the most plants I've ever owned. It's like four or mm-hmm. five now, I think when you put it all together. Um, so I'm a little, it's a little daunting when I think about like in my head, I'm like, okay, I got to water this one every 10 days. I got to water this one every 30 days and this one every, you know, it's like, Oh gosh, I yeah. have enough going on in my head that I I don't need to be keeping track of watering schedules, but we'll yeah, see how I this think goes. My problem is I don't ever make a watering schedule. I just sort of like think in the back of my head, oh, I'll I'll check on them every once in a while and say if yeah. they're watering. And the thing with watering plants is like you can always put it off. Like, you know, you the, at the point where you can't put it off any longer, it's too late. And so yeah. <laughs> I'm just always like, oh, I'll water this plant later after work or tomorrow or um, over the weekend or something. And then I don't. And so I just keep yeah. off. Or of when it. I come back from my three-month road trip, I'll, it'll, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. I'll get to that. Yeah. They'll, they'll survive. I'll just overflow it. And then it'll, they'll survive on that water for the next three months, basically. Yeah. So we'll see. That's, that's the new endeavor for my life as this cool. um, combo cast reaches its finale. Mm-hmm. Tom takes care of plants. Will they survive? Check in when the combo cast returns in a few weeks or however Tom, long it will be. It's an ending, but it's also a beginning. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> it's both. It's always both. Correct. Um, well, Ryan, do you have any loose ends that you wanted to tie up? Do you have any updates? Uh, we talked about yogurt. We talked about uh, you just filled us in on your hair. Do you have any, yeah, yeah. any pressing coronavirus inspired updates in your life? You know, before we go today, I have realized that I, you know, I didn't love zoom to begin with, but I am totally <laughs> zoomed out now. Like oh, man, I, yeah. just the thought of trying to have a heart to heart conversation over any digital medium. Now I'm just like, <laughs> I want to throw up. Like I'm just, <laughs> I just want to, pretend like I've taken a trip to Mars and I just can't talk to anyone for the next few months and then have a big joyful reunion at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Mars, I don't know why I've thought about this, but Elon Musk had a baby as of this recording. Yeah. And did you see the name of name said baby? (laughs) Okay. Uh, How would you pronounce that? I, okay. So I did a little Googling because I was like, no, this is a 
this is, no, this I, is a joke, right? I did the Googling too. I want to know, like, when you looked at that, how did you say it in your head? Because <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna so I'm gonna say it out visually. So it's the letter. Let me see if I remember off the top of my head. It was the letter X, uh-huh. and then it was that little character with the A and the E are combined. So it's like combined. the A E uh-huh. letter, whatever that. Um, and then it, and then it's A dash twelve. And so. I did a quick Google search revealed that that AE thing is called an ash uh-huh. in like Swedish or Nordic or something, whatever language that well, is from. And in and English then, too, it's called ash. Okay. I, I like, I've seen it around. I had no idea what to call it. So, so I guess then I pronounce it X ash a 12, but that's yeah. just like, what, what is that? <laughs> yeah. That was my, is that, a, that was my, is conclusion. that a joke? Is that real? Is it a nickname? Is it, what is that? <laughs> Are they gonna call him Little Xy? And I didn't know he was married to just. I was like, and his partner Grimes. I was like, what is what is a Grimes? What is, <laughs> what is a Grimes? <laughs> and so Grimes is like what a Canadian pop singer or something. She's I a pop like, singer, yeah. Uh, I was like, so and Elon she's like, Musk. And she's Grimes like known for a twelve. Oh, she's like known for her super weird music and outlook okay. and everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did, you know, so I did read the news article and as it turns out, just in the interest of, you know, not reporting, not propagating disinformation as such, um, as it turns out, somebody asked him, like they announced the baby, somebody asked him on Twitter what the baby's name was. And he responded with this name, X Ash A12. And it's still unclear whether or not he was joking. So, (laughs) and, and if you follow Elon Musk on Twitter, he's, a little bonkers um like he's not if you're if you're an upper exec at like tesla he's not the kind of person you want tweeting on behalf of tesla <laughs> to be honest so <laughs> yeah like, let's walk that back or let's uh, take all of his tweets with a grain of salt yeah get the wendy's guy to help out with the branding yeah. on the social media um yeah so that was breaking news maybe by the time our lis- our listeners hear this because it's gonna be a few days later that they hear this maybe it was just all all a big joke and his name is george the this, the name of the baby was just george and and elon musk was having fun with us i don't know but um mm-hmm. back to zoom <laughs> sorry yeah. we had to that was in the back of my mind is like i had to bring that up today because it was so absurd and i saw it um i feel you though like the zoom the zoom out thing like i am in two church groups on zoom right now I started a, a group like like you have in Raleigh, and so we're meeting mm-hmm. on Zoom every other week, and uh, you know all these interviews. We we Zoom we- weekly during this pandemic with with our yobbers, our supporters on Patreon, and so that's add that to the mix too. And it's weird because I enjoy, I legitimately enjoy each Zoom interaction. I'm glad I'm partaking in all these things because otherwise I'm just spending a lot of time by mm-hmm. myself and not communicating. But but there is that little bit of Zoom fatigue where it's like, okay, like, yes, I need to be doing this. I need to stay connected to people. And this is helpful to pass the time and to, to feel like my relational health is not dwindling. But, but there is this sense of how much longer, like how, yeah. how much longer can I have eight Zoom calls a week? Because that just feels absurd. <laughs> I'm like past Zoom fatigue and I'm into Zoom intolerance. Like I might break out into hives any second now. <laughs> oh no. I hope you don't break out right now. Not in the finale. I mean, that could be an epic finale if you just started breaking out it in the last be. couple minutes of this call. I would I, do it for you, Tom. I, I would do it for the Corona everything. Combo cast. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I feel you. And I'm sure, I'm sure some of our listeners too, if they're Zooming, if you guys are Zooming with your churches and groups. And if you partake in our job calls, like maybe you're feeling a lot of that zoom fatigue or even zoom intolerance as well. But I don't know, Ryan, like, what do you think? Like we're, we're recording this in early May. Um, we're both in the state of North Carolina. And I think it's mm-hmm. like this week at some point this week, we, we enter phase one, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. that means. Like for the next couple of weeks, we kind of wait and see how, how uh, the pandemic goes. And then as the weeks go by, if we like pass certain benchmarks, we'll, start opening up more things. So, so are you hopeful? Are you generally hopeful that this month begins a new like thing versus like March and April, which were just dead, like just wait, not wasted months. I don't want to be that dramatic, Mm -hmm. but, but they were very, it it felt very much just like everything just came to a standstill. Do you feel like May maybe brings a little more 
propulsion. I think May, like everyone's getting definitely stir crazy. Like I see more traffic out and about. Like my back, some of my backyard neighbors were having a bonfire party the other night. Like people okay. are just kind of starting to get a little fast and loose with the social distancing. So I think whether whether we like it or not, we're loosening loosening up, whether it's official or not. Um, I think until I mean I I don't I just keep up with some some headlines every day, but it really does seem like until we get more and better testing. Um, like we're not going to really know how quickly we can move forward with reopening. Like, yeah, like May is just going to be a time of, all right, we'll try reopening this and we'll see if people start dying because we can't really <laughs> test yeah. that many people. And, and you know, it's going to be a trial by error, I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm in this like, I feel pulled in both directions because I'm on the one hand, I'm so antsy for everything to start reopening and us to start reintegrating back into yeah. society again. And then I have this like other side of me that's like, oh gosh, like what if we, what if we do it too, too early? Wouldn't it be worth it to have another month mm-hmm. or two months even of a standstill just to be completely sure like this thing isn't going to get worse again and we're not going to have to do this mm-hmm. all over again because that is the biggest tremor in my soul if i'm being honest like i really don't want to have to do this again (laughs) yeah and i'm worried i'm worried that like some states have pulled the trigger too soon and it's going to like inevitably have some sort of chain effect on the other states around it and everything and so i uh yeah i hope my optimistic self hopes that yes we start we're we're already through the clear through the worst of it and it's just a matter of like slowly reintegrating and turning all the the switches back on but Mm -hmm. but i have that fear in my soul that that we're not there yet and yeah we need more testing or whatever the logistics are that aren't happening that that is making this kind of a risky thing so i don't know are there any parts of you that kind of don't want to go back yet interesting um I think part of me, part of me feels like I haven't been nearly as productive or I haven't been nearly as present as I would have liked to have been through this whole ordeal. And so mm-hmm. the thought of like, if things just suddenly reopen tomorrow, like, will have, will I, will I be able to look back on this and feel proud of myself for how I, for how I handled every day and, and took care of myself and stayed connected with others. Cause if I'm being honest, if I'm looking back now, there are plenty of things I can point to that are positive, but in general, I kind of give myself like a C, maybe a C minus. Like it doesn't, mm-hmm. doesn't feel like mm-hmm. this, like I could, I could have done way better. And so, so part of me wants to still have the time to make up for that. Cause the last, I would say the last week of my life has been more of a B plus, maybe even an yeah. A minus to offset yeah. <laughs> the D that was before mm-hmm. that. But, um, but I mean, I would say mostly like, yeah, if I could have everything turned on tomorrow, of course I would, but, but, um, but there is part of me that definitely still wants to get something from this and to, to take it with me into whatever tomorrow looks like. Yeah. I feel like I've just only recently started to pick up on and learn the things that I have sort of needed to learn during this time. Um, and so that part of me is like, hold up, wait, don't reopen. I'm still processing. Right. <laughs> like I'm still, I'm still growing from this experience and I just now figured out what I, how I need to grow. In this yeah. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. So if we reopen, we miss out on that. Yeah. Hold on. Like I'm contemplating something. I'm on the beat of something good and yeah. Yeah. Y'all go ahead and reopen. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to keep quarantining for another three yeah. days. Yeah. So I don't know. That'd be hilarious if everything is start opening and I just continue to self quarantine for another week <laughs> just because I'm not ready to come out yet. Yeah. I'm like, and my masks just got here yesterday. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, but put off getting those masks, but they're here now. So I'm going to use yeah. them for the next month, yeah. whether people are around me using it or not. So I don't know. I hope that for everyone listening, like here we are, we're, we're in our closing minutes here. Like I hope everyone listening that this podcast has helped you think about things, get your mind off of things. Again, it was my hope that in these episodes, there would be some combination of something to distract you from the stresses or the, the uncertainties that, you're, that we're all facing. Um, but that it would also, in some episodes, give you a lot of solid things to think about and ways to process self-care and ways to think about the church and um, ways to improve connection and community 
beyond, beyond this time. And so, um, like I said at the top, I've had a blast having these conversations. Um, thanks to Ryan and to Jacob and Nate. I'm going to forget somebody, my brother, Andy, um, some of our newer bloggers that we got to meet for the first time, Ben and Eugene and Daniel, gosh, who else? Matthew and Dean Marshall. and Marshall. Okay. I can't forget Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's everybody. Or if I left someone out, I'll send you a I'll send you a gift. Yeah, it's been, it's just been really fun to connect with all of you guys. I appreciate y'all taking the time. Like I said, we're going to get back to some sense of normalcy, some sense of a rhythm again. Um, it was good to take a little break from the Yobcast. And um, we, we had done, I think, 21 consecutive episodes with not really much of a break. So it was great to step away um, to, to launch into this endeavor. And, and like I said, I've gotten enough feedback over the last month and a half that um, that I'm not going to stop doing the combo cast. They just won't be as frequent. That's all. So, so I don't know what the rhythm's going to be if it happens once a week from now on, once a month from now on, once every couple months. I don't know. But um, as it makes sense to do, and as uh, certainly as time allows, I I love doing these short form conversations. They're really fun. So so that'll continue. And like I said, stay tuned in the weeks to come. I hope the Yobcast will return soon once I get my microphone. And Ryan's hair is growing exactly the way it's supposed to because of his Amazon delivery getting here on time. Um, hopefully your other brother's podcast will grow the way it needs to go in its own due time. So, so just stay tuned. If y'all want to keep up to date uh, with what's going on, I'll try to do that. I'll try to keep everyone up to date with scheduling and, and when are, when are we coming back? So be sure to follow us on all the socials at your other bros, follow our, follow our blog, follow everything we put out on our website, your other brothers, Dot com. And remember, for the last time I'm saying this, but consult your local authorities just to be sure about what you should do. Um, remember, you are not alone. Even the sparrow stays at home. Stay at home, of course, but stay connected. And it's been a joy connecting with everybody. And it's been a joy connecting with you today, Ryan, on the season finale. I hope you too. I hope everyone feels resolved. <laughs> Do you feel resolved? Hope we finished strong. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's a real sense of denouement, you know, tying everything up in the end. Yeah, everything makes total sense. Like the lost finale, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> for those that watched. All right. Thank you guys for listening to this Corona Convo cast. We'll be back again soon with either your other brother's podcast or just the combo cast. We'll see which comes first. So stay tuned. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.